Hello and welcome to AuthorCast at Authorscoop.com, brought to you in association with PsychJourney.com. I'm Jamie Mason, and today I'm speaking with Masha Hamilton and gaining some behind-the-scenes insight into her upcoming release from Unbridled Books, 31 Hours. Ms. Hamilton is a novelist and veteran foreign correspondent, having worked for the Associated Press for five years in the Middle East and for the Los Angeles Times and NBC Radio in Moscow for another five-year stint beyond that. In her fourth novel, a dramatic thriller, 31 Hours, we glimpse the impact point at the end of a young man's trajectory of discontent and isolation, and we come to fear for the unsuspecting commuters on the New York City subway system who won't know to be afraid of him for themselves. And while Jonas relates his own thoughts and doubts and rationalizations, his path is given more depth through the voices and stories of those closest to him, his parents and his girlfriend as they search for him, and from his mentor who watches his plans for Jonas and for the world unfold. How does a well-loved young man slip through the cracks of a good upbringing and warm relationships into a vulnerability that leaves him open to the ideas of noble murder? It'll take 31 hours to find out. Masha, thanks so much for speaking with me today. Jamie, thank you for having me. I specifically don't want to give away this story here on the plot of 31 hours uh, because I think there's the most to be had from this story by going in without too many preconceived notions. In fact, preconceived notions could very well be traced to the foundations of some of the problems that lead young Jonas into his ideological turmoil. And you didn't make the motivations in this book uh, simple, which makes it all the more convincing. Tell me a little bit about some of the assumptions these characters make that converge in this epic scale emergency. Uh, that's a great question. I think one of the one of the topics that I wanted to explore, I, I don't know if this is an assumption, is uh, Jonas's mother, Carol. The, the novel opens with her uh, waking up in the middle of the night with an intuition that something might be wrong and not being sure whether or not to trust that intuition. I wanted to explore that period when you are the parent of a, of a young adult, someone who's definitely not a child anymore but also really not fully an adult, and your job is to give them space and trust. But in the case of Carol, she wakes up still feeling something is wrong um, and, and wanting to pursue that idea. I also really wanted to explore Jonas beyond the, the sort of headlines of someone who commits an act of violence to make him real and human and identifiable so that he could be, you know, the kid next door. So that's some of what I was trying to explore as I worked on the novel. I think it's very effective because we do see a headline, and that is an assumption that we, we sort of box that person into the headline and that's what they are. They are this thing that did this. And 31 Hours does a wonderful job of, of really digging out the bottom of that box. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome. You touch on an interesting point because youth itself seems quite dangerous in this story. Um, the girl, the, the, the preteen Mara, is just blossoming into her rational mind. And I came to think of it as, as if she were on the first threshold of naivete, thinking she could affect a change on her parents' disintegrating marriage. And then, of course, there's Jonas at 21, who's more at that stage of knowledge without perhaps the perspective to temper it. There seems to be some lesson in parenting that could be taken as cautionary points from 31 Hours. Your thoughts? Well, I think that there were several things that I poured into this novel as I was writing it and one of the one of those things certainly is my own uh, growth as a parent I have three kids mm -hmm. uh, the youngest is 14 the oldest is 20 so I I have some of that worry stage of my role as a parent changing and and you know how do I give them support and yet remain present <laughs> another thing that Carol the mother in the novel uh, wonders about is you know she's given her son a liberal tolerant upbringing and yet she wonders maybe I should have instilled more traditional religion or structure into his into to his youth so he wouldn't be quite so questioning. He's a very questioning young man and he always has been very curious and wondering and she has supported that and yet she's wondering with her ex-husband at various points, hmm, maybe maybe that was the wrong thing. Maybe we should have and of course her ex-husband responds by saying, oh yeah, it's so dangerous to, have, to be liberal. Right. What do you mean? That's ridiculous. So they have this argument among themselves which I think is parallels an argument that some parents may have now about you know what's the right way to, to bring up our kids. Yeah, exactly. Exactly, and it, there was a line somewhere I ran across that said, not in your book, but in life, someone said, your mind is so open that your brain fell out. Yes, and <laughs> that's great, and that's part of the question. You know, in that moment of 
you know, wondering, what did I do wrong? How did I cause this? What might I have done differently? When when Carol doesn't even know exactly what's happening, but she's just fearful. Her son right. has been more depressed a little bit and, and more withdrawn, and she's concerned. And her this is something else that her ex-husband says to her at the time, look, this is part of growing up. Don't you remember what we were like at 21? Right. We weren't calling our mother every week. <laughs> you know, give him a break, for Christ's sake. You know, And this is the kind of argument that the two of them had that felt very real to me and was almost like an internal argument that I was having with myself oh, yeah. on some level, you know? Well, we know that it is probably impossible not to do something wrong, and you can almost mess up your children by not messing them up, <laughs> because they have to be, that, you know, that life can be messy, so again, that's one, motivations in, in, the, in the novel are very complex, and although told in a way that makes sense, but it's kind of nice to see nothing so, so very, very C-spot run. I'm curious about Sonny Hurt. All of the characters are at least tangentially associated with Jonas and his quest, except for Sonny. And how did you select this passerby for his story within 31 hours? You know, one way they all converge, or a number of them converge, is, is uh, within the subway system itself. And the New York subway system I find to be very poetic in a sort of edgy way. I wrote parts of the novel while sitting on the subway itself, and I, I have great admiration, almost love for the New York subway system. And yet at the same time, it, is, it can be a fearful place. Sonny Hurt was actually initially modeled on a panhandler that I often ran into, who said Sonny's line, you know, if you ain't got it, I understand, oh, right. I ain't got it, but that same line is pretty much what this panhandler always said, and I gave those words to Sonny Hurt. And I also wanted to make Sonny human, to make him complex, to give him the depth that would allow the reader to enter into, again, a life that might be alien to us. Jonas in the headlines might be a life that's alien to us, and Sonny Hurt might be a life that's alien to us, but I wanted to make somehow them both so real that we could we could really identify with them. And, and I think that's one of the great points of the novel, that it, it is dangerous not to try to identify with people. Yes, uh, you, absolutely. You, you can miss a lot, and so I think it was a very effective time was that all roads led to Rome, but now so often it seems for drama, both real and fictional, that many, many roads lead to or through New York City. Uh -huh. You've been all over the world in your travels. What are your thoughts on putting New York in the crosshairs in 31 hours? You know, I, I think that many of us who live in New York sort of feel that, I'm trying to figure out how to say this in a way that's not inflammatory, but that New York is an obvious potential site for additional attacks that are aimed at a large scale, you know, large number of people because it's so easy to target so many people. Right. And at various points, I've been worried. Uh, there was a, a period when we were getting ready to, our country was getting ready to invade Iraq, that I made a big effort to locate all the parents in my high school daughter's friends group and where their offices were and what their phone numbers were and send out this, I sort of organized this, you know, if you're ever in trouble and you're in Manhattan and you can't get home to me in Brooklyn, here's where you can go and here's where we can all call and this sort of a sort of structure. I think that when it, when it occurred to me that I wanted to explore the mindset, um, New York and the New York subway seemed obvious as the setting to me. It's so timely and it, it is alarming, but again, I think the, the message of the book or, or one of the messages is try to know, try to understand forewarned is very often forearmed and yes yeah and, and also maybe not judge too but exactly. I mean not prejudge the situation and think okay I understand I mean Jonas talks about that too in his moments of doubt and his moments of certainty when we don't really know what he's going to do he talks about the idea of you know if I go through with this people will prejudge me and they'll assume you know x y and z and actually that's not the case and he talks about that that sort of idea in his in the, the chapters that are his viewpoint oh it's uh, it's very very valuable and I hope our interview helps people to ignite their curiosity and uh, and go get this book because I truly enjoyed it. Thank um, you, too. Masha, congratulations on such a compelling and brave achievement in 31 hours. I look very forward to tracking its success. Thanks, Jamie. Sure. For more information on 31 hours and Ms. Hamilton's fascinating body of work, visit www.mashahamilton.com. 31 Hours will be released on September 8th from Unbridled Books and is available at Amazon.com for order as we speak.
Do check back with Author Scoop next week when we'll hear more from Masha Hamilton when she slides into our guest feature, Five Minutes Alone With, to lend her a written insight on how she wrangles the craft of her writing and a sneak peek of 31 hours in her own words. If you've enjoyed this interview, head over to www.psychjourney.com for more than 500 podcasts on just about any topic you can think of. For authorscoop.com and psychjourney.com, this is Jamie Mason. Thank you.